Hey everyone, my name is Mirai and welcome to the Icebooker 42 video for video effects. Now first I'm going to show how to configure video effects through the Icebooker in-game GUI. Then I'll show how to do it inside of Icebooker using a mapped key. And then I'll cover all of the other additional options related to the feature itself. So before getting started, let's go over some of the finer details. First, video effects requires Windows Vista or later. So if you're still using the ancient Windows XP in the year 2017, then you're out of luck. Second, if you are using Windows Vista or Windows 7, then Windows Arrow needs to be enabled. If you're using either of these operating systems and are unsure of whether or not Arrow is enabled, then check the video description for a link on how to check its status. Third, video effects does not work across multiple computers. Fourth, video effects are currently restricted to rectangular shapes only. Fifth, you cannot have a viewer and a source using the same name on the same window. That might not make sense right now, but after watching this video, it should. And sixth, while not required, it's highly recommended that you use a window layout built with video effects, which is generally referred to as a VFX layout. A standard window layout can be used, but video effects viewers will then suffer from low quality. However, for further information on VFX layouts, please check the video description. For this initial demonstration, I'll simply be showing how to view one character's player frame on another character's window without being in a party. So in order to configure video effects using the in-game GUI, first, move to the window that contains the thing, whatever it is, that you want to see in your other windows. I want to see this character's player frame on my other character's window, so I'm starting out on the right. Next, open up the in-game GUI, also referred to as the Iceboxer control panel, and move over to the video effects tab. The default key combination to access the control panel is Control shift alt g and it is configurable within your character set. Now there are two components to every video effects setup, a viewer and a source. The source is what you want to see in your other windows and the viewer then views the source. Again, I wanna be able to see this character's player frame on my other window. So I'm going to be creating my source over here. From the first dropdown on the video effects tab, I'm going to select video effects source. After that, I need to give it a name, but there are a few restrictions. First, don't use the letters I and S followed by a number. I won't be going into detail for what they do in this video, but these are already used by Innerspace internally. However, if you do want more information about this, then I suggest checking out the video effects entry on the Icebooker wiki. Second, don't end the name with a number, at least not right now. Technically, it won't break anything, but it also does something special, and I'll be covering that later. So I'll recommend that you avoid it for now. Third, names do not accept spaces and everything after the space will be ignored. And finally, avoid using special characters if possible. Keeping the name to just standard alphabet characters will help you avoid any conflicts. There are exceptions for which special characters are allowed, so if you're dead set on using them, then test them out if you'd like. But if things aren't working, then those could be what's causing an issue. All right, so with all of that said, I'm just going to name the source player frame to keep things simple. And below the name, you can set the width and the height if you already know these values ahead of time, but this can be adjusted at any point. So I'll leave those as default for now and I'll click the add button to create my source. Immediately, you'll notice a green box show up in the upper left, as well as another panel that contains the properties for it. Now the green box is the source that I just created and it needs to be placed over the part of the screen that I want to view in my other window. It can be dragged around by its title bar and I can change its size by dragging the edges of it as well. So the properties panel shows that this is a source. It shows the position from the upper left of the window, the name of it, the width, and the height. Pretty standard stuff. Below that, there is an additional sync setting as well, but I won't be covering that until later. Also, if you happen to close the properties panel for a given source or viewer, you can bring it back by simply clicking on the item that you want to adjust the properties of, and it will reappear. Now, because I've done this before, I already know what size I want to make this source and where exactly I need to put it. Normally, this is where you'd be making guesses and then fine-tuning these values, but for the video, I'm just trying to save on time. After that, I can hit Apply, and the source will adjust accordingly. And that's all we need to do in this window. So I'll close out of the in-game GUI using the same key combination I used to open it, and I'll move over to my other character. Here, I'm going to go through almost the exact same motions as I did in the other window, except I'm going to be creating a viewer in this window instead of a source. 
So once again, open up the in-game GUI using Control shift alt g or whatever you've got it set to, and move over to the Video Effects tab. First, ensure that the top dropdown is set to Video Effects Viewer. Next, we need to give it a name, but the name of the viewer needs to match the name of the source exactly. If the two names don't match, then they can't connect, so to speak, and you won't be able to see anything through the viewer. So this is a very important step. However, if the source was properly created, then it will appear in the drop-down selection menu right above the name field, and here we can see that player frame is indeed a selectable choice. There are two additional choices as well, one of which I briefly mentioned a moment ago, but we're not worried about those for this particular video. So when selecting a source from the dropdown, the width and the height values are adjusted automatically to match the source. You can resize the viewer, but to avoid any distortion, both the source and the viewer should be the same size and preferably using the same aspect ratio. Okay, so I can also set the border color if I want, which uses RGB hex codes, or I can set the opacity, both of which are personal preference, and I'm not going to adjust either of them for this video. So I'll hit add to create my viewer, and we see the same green box show up in the upper left, along with the additional properties panel like before. The viewer looks very similar to the source, it works in the same way, and the properties panel also holds a lot of the same information. Panel type, name, position from the upper left of the window, width, height, and the border color and opacity options. There are also some additional settings below all of those, which I'll be covering later on in the video. Now the viewer has some helpful text written on it. This one is a little small and I don't want to resize it, so I'll just put a larger one up on the screen. It asks, seeing green, with a few reasons for why you might be seeing green instead of seeing your source. First, be on Windows Vista or later. Check. Second, have arrow enabled. I'm using Windows 10, so that doesn't pertain to me. Check. Third, hold control if the control panel is open. Well, the control panel is open, so I'll hold down my control key, and there's my source. So at this point, I can place this viewer wherever I want. And after doing so, I can exit out of the in-game GUI to see my other character's player frame on my screen without being in a party. Now, that's all there is to know when it comes to creating a VFX setup through the in-game GUI. But because we did use the in-game GUI, there is some additional information to cover. First, you can save the layout of your video effects windows using the setting near the bottom of the video effects tab in the IS box or control panel. If you want to have a particular layout load upon launching a specific character set, then save the layout as auto and it will automatically load alongside the character set each time it's launched. Otherwise, you can save multiple sets of layouts and load them in whenever you'd like, but only one set can be active at any given time. In addition, the layout only needs to be saved in one window as the set is saved for the entire character set that is currently active. Second, if you'd like to load a set of video effects windows from one character set onto a different character set, then you can use the import tab of the in-game GUI to do that. First, select the feature you'd like to import, then the item you'd like to import, and finally, click the import button. And that's it. Now, unlike saving a layout, importing a layout will only affect the character you're currently focused on, so you will need to repeat this process for each character in your character set. And if you want to keep the newly imported layout, then don't forget to save it for the active character set as well. So now I'm going to move into IS Boxer and configure the exact same setup, but this time I'll be doing it with a video effects action within a mapped key. I'll also be starting with a clean slate so what I just configured is not being carried over. So first, create a mapped key, name it whatever you'd like, and for this example, give it a hotkey. Then, under step one, right-click on the word Actions and select Video Effects Action near the bottom of the list. In this action, you'll see most of the same options as you had seen previously in the Properties panel of the in-game GUI, but now it's all been consolidated into one area. To start off, I'm going to configure the same setup I showed when using the in-game GUI, and then afterwards I'll talk about these other settings. So from the prior example, I first created the source on my second game window, the window on the right, so that I could see it on my main, the window on my left. We'll do all of this in the same order, so that means I'll start by creating the source. And in the target selection, I'm going to set this to slot two of my character set. That's the window on the right. I'll emphasize that it's important that the target be set correctly because if you're creating sources or viewers using incorrect targets, then things aren't going to work as you expect them to. 
So next I'm going to choose to create the source, which means I'll select the create option, but I'll also need to make sure that video effects source is selected in this dropdown menu. For the name, I'll just use the same player frame as before. Then there are the position and size options. Now I obviously know the values I'm going to be using, but if you're only setting this up in IS Box or through the VFX action, then it's unlikely you're going to be able to just pull these values out of thin air. So instead, what I recommend doing is building a mock-up layout using the in-game GUI to estimate the values that you need. Otherwise, you're just going to be repeatedly guessing and exporting until you get it right. But that's it for my source setup. To recap, I'm creating a video effects source named player frame using these dimensions, which will be positioned at these on-screen coordinates, and it's being created on the character that resides in slot two of my character set. All right, so next I need to create the viewer on my main character in slot one to view that source. I can either create a brand new video effects action and then fill in all of the information once again, or I can copy the current action, paste it back into this step, and then make a few small adjustments to it since a lot of the information is the same. For the viewer, my target is going to change from slot two to slot one of my character set. I still wanna create something, but this time it's going to be a viewer rather than a source, so this needs to be changed. The name stays the same, the size stays the same, but the position changes just a bit based on what I had before. And that's it for my viewer. Now, after I export this profile, I can press this hotkey and it will create a source in slot two and a viewer in slot one. And if we check this out in game, There you have it. Now, because I set this up using a mapped key inside of IS Boxer, there's no need to save anything because it's saved along with my profile. And if I want to use this on another character set, I can do so without needing to import anything. These are the benefits to setting up video effects inside of IS Boxer as opposed to using the in-game GUI. But whichever method you choose is fine. So that's it for video effects basics. To once again recap, you first need a source on a window over the part of the UI that you want to look at while on another character. Then you need a viewer in one or more of your other character's windows to view that source. Finally, the names of both the source and the viewer need to be the same so that they can connect. And assuming all the criteria listed at the beginning of this video is also met, then that's all that's required in order to get started. Okay, so with that said, let's talk about these other options that we skipped over before. Now this is just going to be a brief overview since some of these options can be used in a fairly advanced manner and this introductory video is not really the place to delve deep into specific examples. So first, there's the repeater pass-through option. Enabling this option on a viewer will broadcast your mouse and optionally your keyboard to the source when your mouse is inside the borders of the viewer. And this allows you to interact with the source game client without needing to swap over to it. This option can be found in the Properties panel of the viewer within the in-game GUI, as well as the video effects action inside of Ice Boxer. Next is the Enable Video Effects Focus Hotkey option. Enabling this option on a viewer will allow you to use the Video Effects Focus Hotkey assigned within your character set to change focus to the game client where the source resides. The default key combination is Alt-Mouse 1, where Mouse 1 is the left button on your mouse, and when holding down Alt, you're then able to click on a video effects viewer, which will then change over to that window. This looks like it might be a standard window layout, but in this case, the smaller window is a video effects viewer. This option can be found in the properties panel of the viewer within the in-game GUI, as well as the video effects action inside of IS Boxer. After that, there's the hold mapped key while mouse is over this feed option. This is a more advanced option, but enabling it and assigning a mapped key will allow you to execute that mapped key when moving your mouse into the viewer, out of the viewer, or both. A mapped key set to execute when pressed will fire when entering the viewer. A mapped key set to execute when released will fire when exiting the viewer. And a mapped key set to execute when both pressed or released will fire off during both entering and exiting. This option is also available in both the properties panel of the viewer within the in-game GUI, as well as the video effects action inside of IS Boxer. Then there's the sync option, and this option is only available through the in-game GUI. It allows you to create multiple sources and or viewers across all of your windows very quickly. So based upon the example I showed earlier, I'm at the stage where I've already applied the size and position for my source on my second character, and it's named player frame as before. 
However, I can add the character set slot number to the end of the name, in this case 2, apply the change, and then press the sync button. And you'll notice that a new source has appeared on my character in slot 1. It uses the same position and the same size, but it's named player frame 1. By indicating the source I created was in slot 2, by ending its name with the number 2, InnerSpace was then able to properly and automatically sync that source across my characters. Now, unfortunately, I cannot give a good example for syncing viewers with only two characters since it works a bit differently, but if you want to know more about this, then there is an older video series of mine linked in the description which will show this process a bit more in depth. Alright, finally, there are a few options specific to the video effects action within Boxer that I didn't cover earlier. First, if you've created and saved your video effects using the in-game GUI, you can load them using the Load Video Effects Set option near the top. Simply enable it and enter the name of the video effects set you'd like to load. However, this option cannot be used to import video effects sets saved under other character sets, and only the video effects sets found in the dropdown within the in-game GUI are available for the particular character set that is currently loaded. Next, there's the Remove All Video Effects option, this one is self-explanatory in that it removes all video effects that are currently loaded. This option does not delete anything, so don't worry about that, but it's normally used as part of a multi-step mapped key to create a toggle for hiding and showing entire video effects sets. For example, adding a second step to the mapped key I created earlier and then setting this option will allow me to toggle my video effects on and off using the hotkey I assigned. Then there are the hide and show options that I skipped over earlier. These are normally used together, and they're very similar to the load option near the top in the sense that they're used to show or hide specific viewers or sources rather than an entire set all at once. Again, show and hide are normally used together, whereas create and destroy are also used together. All right, well, that's all there is when it comes to the basics on using video effects. It's a very nice feature of Boxer that many players use for both beginner and advanced setups during their everyday multiboxing gameplay. As before, please check the video description for any additional videos, past, present, or future that will be added. Again, my name is Mirai. Thank you for watching, and for any further questions, comments, or concerns, please visit the ISBoxer forum or the live chat.